What's up, today we're going to be making an IP geolocator in C Sharp. In case you didn't know, any IP address can be traced back to a location, country, city, just a bunch of geolocative information. And you've probably seen those videos on YouTube where the dark web hackers go on Omegle and then geolocate the people that they're on a call with. So yeah, it's definitely a fun thing to do and the best part is it's completely legal and this video is for educational purposes only. So as I write the code in this video, I'm going to be breaking down every line of code so you actually learn something from this video and you're not just a skid of copy pasting everything from my GitHub. Alright, so that's everything out of the way. Let's get straight into it. So first, you obviously want to install Visual Studio. It'll have basically everything you need when it comes to C Sharp on Windows. Just look up Visual Studio installer and you should find it. So in Visual Studio, you want to create a new project. And today we're going to be using C Sharp. So we see it right here, C Sharp console app. And you want to make sure that in the brackets, it says .NET Framework. So we're just going to double click this. And I don't know, let's call it Geolocate. We have all the libraries that the code's going to be using up here, the namespace, internal class, and the main function where the code is going to start running. First, we'll give a console title a nice name so it's not just, you know, CMD or our project file. To set the title, you want to do console.title equals string and over here is whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it geolocator. Don't forget the semicolon at the end of every single line because that's how C Sharp works. If you don't do that, then it's going to start giving you errors. All right, so before we start with the code, there are a few libraries that we need to include. First one is systemnet HTTP. We need this so we can make HTTP requests because how this geolocator is going to work in the first place is that we're actually going to just call an API and get the response from that and just display it. So it's pretty simple. We're not doing anything crazy. And to do that, we need to be able to send get requests. So for that reason, we need net.http. And also we want to include Nudensov JSON because um, we're going to be getting the output from the API in a JSON format. And we're going to be parsing the JSON. So basically just reading it and assigning the different, you know, JSON values to variables. So yeah, to parse JSON, we need Nudensoft.json. And it should give you an error because we actually need to install this one. You want to right click on your project in the solution explorer and then click on manage NuGet packages. All right, so we see the first result here, 5 billion downloads. This is the correct one. Click this little arrow button to install it and boom, installed. Perfect. All right, so now we'll make an input for the IP that the user of the program wants to geolocate. So first we're going to output console.write. We're going to say enter IP address and then string IP is equal to console.readline. All right, so we inputted the IP address and saved it into the IP variable. All right, so now we're actually going to have to figure out this whole API thing, like how we're actually going to get the information that we need. So we're going to be using ipinfo.io for this. It's a free public API and um, it's a free public API. So anyway, first we're going to test it out with command prompt. So I have command prompt on up right here and we're just going to use curl. So that's the curl command and this is the IP format. So HTTPS IP info, the IP goes here. And then over here, you specify the format that you want it in. So they can be JSON, YAML, XML, all these, you know, different things. We're going to be using JSON because that's easier to deal with. All right. So I want to use some kind of IP for the rest of this video. That's uh, not my own. So I'm just going to ping like, OK, let's use reddit.com for this. This will work. So I'm just going to paste that in. And here we go. So it gives us all this info that we can use. All right, so now we're going to make a URL variable where we're basically going to store the URL that we're going to be using as the get request. So string URL, it's going to be equal to this right here, except we're just going to switch out the IP. So we had a dollar sign before the string. This will basically just use our IP variable in it. To make the HTTP request, the function that we're running it from needs to be asynchronous. So we, we just want to add async task and get rid of void and we're good to go. So using HTTP client equals new HTTP client over here, we're just basically creating an object for HTTP client, which as we see here provides a base class for sending HTTP requests and receiving them. Also, whenever you deal with HTTP requests to catch errors, I always use try. So how it works is that you just have try curly brackets and you put all your HTTP code here. And if something goes wrong, we see catch right here, autofills for us. 
So if there is some kind of exception or some kind of error, we can just display that back to the user in the catch section right here. All right, so now we're gonna make the actual request. Here we go. As always, autofill is carrying. So over here, we're just awaiting client, which is the name of the object for our HTTP client, then dot get async. So it's a get request for our URL, which includes the IP address and displays back all the geolocation info. Then we also add a response dot ensure status success code to make sure everything went well. So now we can give the user an update. We can say like uh, request successfully made. And now we need to actually save the response in the variable so we can parse it and display it back to the user. So string response. And yeah, over here we await the response content and read it as a string async. So we just read it as a string. Now we have it saved in response data. So technically we could keep it messy and just display response data. And it's just going to show us what it basically shows right here. So it's information that we don't want to display back to the user. Plus there's quotes, there's curly brackets. It just it look, doesn't look that good. Now to parse it, we have to make a separate class. So go up to your namespace, hit enter a couple times, and let's call this public class, I don't know, just data. Add curly brackets, and let's see what information we're looking for. So first one that catches my eye is the city. So we're gonna type public string city and then curly brackets, get set, and then close them. So what get set does, it's gonna look for a city, and then it's gonna save it in the response data dot city. Basically looks for city and saves it as city. So hit control D to copy this a couple times because we're just gonna be, you know, repeating the code. Next, uh, region looks pretty cool, so we're gonna add region, country, yeah, that's fine. All right, perfect, let's keep writing the code. Now we're gonna make an instance of the data, so we type in data, we see that it's referencing this class right here. And let's call it IP info. Okay, I can't lie, I kind of forgot the command for this one. Uh, wait, let me go through my old projects. All right, I'm just going to copy paste this. So, you know, it just takes it apart, parses it, and response body notes, response data. Here we go. And you shouldn't be getting any errors. Everything should be looking nice and colorful without any red, of course. All right, so now we have all the info stored in IP info, and now we can just, I guess, display it. So first, I'm going to clear the console to make it look, you know, nice and pretty. And we're going to be doing a whole lot of right lines, so I'm just going to skip forward on this part. Okay, I wrote out all the lines. Now, before we test it out, let's just finish the catch. You want to add brackets and type HTTP request exception. Um, sure, EX is fine. What people usually do is that they just output uh, e dot or ex dot message in this case error and then open brackets ex dot capital M message. Here we go. All right, so let's test this out. We're going to go ahead and run this. And OK, geolocator looking nice. Enter IP address. Here we go. Oof. OK, yeah, works fine. Yeah, country, city, coordinates. Perfect. Yeah, so it works the way we want it. No issues. Now, there is actually something cool that we can add before I end this video. You definitely don't want to miss this part. Basically, there's a way that we can make a Google Maps link using this information that drops us off uh, where the coordinates lead to. It's pretty easy. So if you look here, we see that the location is split into the longitude and latitude and how Google Map basically URLs are made is uh, longitude and latitude in the URL. So we can basically make a URL for Google Maps and just display it. And if they copy paste it into a browser, they're going to be brought to those coordinates in Google Maps. So it's a small trick, you know. So yeah, to split the coordinates, we're going to have to use a string array and use the split function. So string is the variable type. And for an array, all you need to do is add square brackets. Right, I'm just call it chords for coordinates. And it's going to be equal to IP info dot LOC, which is our coordinates and then dot split and here it already fills it out for us so now chords index zero is going to be the latitude and chords index one is going to be the longitude or the other way around whatever i confuse them so here we're going to make another console right line and over here we're going to go google maps and this is what the url typically looks like and now we're just going to have to add chords index one or index zero since with arrays they start from zero and not from one outside of the curly brackets you add a comma make new ones and over here 
one inside the square brackets close to curly brackets god damn so many brackets and then just semicolon at the end of the line and let's see it so i'm gonna run it again putting in the ip boom all right so now we have the google maps link let's actually see if this works so i'm gonna copy this got my little guest window here we're just gonna paste that in and boom here we go perfect it literally just brings us there we can click on the street and open street view if we want okay so the coordinates probably aren't perfect because i'm guessing reddit isn't hosted in one of these duplexes but this is the general location so somewhere around here but yeah sometimes it does bring you like actually like pretty close to the ip's geolocation so really depends on your luck and that's it for today's video i thought about putting the code on my github but come on it's not hard it's literally bare code i already know there's going to be people in the comments asking for someone who already wrote the code to just paste it in but come on you just you learn something from this you might as well type the six lines of code that it takes not a big deal you got this i believe in you bro come on all right so i hope you enjoyed like and subscribe and i'll see you next time